Welcome to Aging Strong, Tufts Medical Center's Injury Prevention and Outreach Program that aims to empower older adults with information and resources that can empower their lives. You can, fi- you can find this program under the QA TV's health links. This program is sponsored by the City of Quincy's Health Department. And I want to thank you, uh, Quincy Health Department, for our continued partnerships and allowing me to be able to do my outreach in this manner. And so today I want to um, share with you um, a guest speaker. His name is Steve Tobias. But before I uh, formally introduce him, I want to get read to you something I read from the National Institute of Health. Hearing loss is a risk factor in older adult falls. And in a nutshell, in that particular article, they said the worst someone's hearing loss is, the higher the incidence of falls in older adults. So today with me is Steve Tobias, and he owns Tobias Hearing. Steve, welcome. Hello, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much for being here. I want to uh, be able to share uh, you with the with the viewers out there, because I know you're very knowledgeable about hearing and hearing loss, you owning your own business and, and, um, you know, in hearing aids. So um, before I start the PowerPoint presentation, Steve, can you just uh, let the viewers know how you got into the business of um, hearing aids? Uh, Yeah, I kind of grew up in it because my dad was uh, in the same uh, field same business uh, he started in 1959 which gives us a quite a track record and um i went to uh umass amherst and studied uh communication disorders which covers a little bit about everything and right out of college he needed some help because his business was uh was was very busy he was right in the heart of boston uh the clinics were very fond of him and um after his passing four years later, I came down uh, to Quincy and started my own business because uh, his business was with a partner. So I've been in Quincy uh, for about 38 years now, and uh, I love the work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's great. That's great. Yeah. So let me just start the PowerPoint presentation here. So it looks like you offer other services too. Well, yeah, I I like to protect hearing as well as uh, help people that have hearing loss. So a lot of those people are musicians. Um, we try to provide them with filtered custom earplugs um, that they can protect their hearing, yet at the same time they can hear everything that they need to hear uh, while they're playing in bands, etc. That makes a lot of sense, especially since they're up on stage and we, they have the big stereo booming uh, right behind them, right? Is there a lot yeah. of musicians out there with a uh, hearing loss? Uh, well, I'm sure there are a lot of famous ones too. Uh, but let's talk about the ones that we're able to help right now. Uh, some of them play with top name bands and they just happen to have uh, an amplifier that's always blasting at their ear or a drum that's blasting at their ear or a harmonica, whatever. So these uh, filters allow them to still hear what's going on without it being damaging to their hearing. So uh, it's a much better solution than waiting to get hearing aids down the road. That's definitely, yeah. Wow. Okay. So can you, um, looks looks like there's a lot of, uh, I'm sure you have a lot of clients uh, who have many questions that they typically ask, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, the main the main way to tell if you have a hearing loss is when somebody yells at you and says, you're not hearing me. So that's usually what happens is that somebody else recognizes it before you do. Um, you might be asking uh, people to repeat themselves or have more difficulty with women and children. They have higher pitched, quieter voices. Um And you're just missing punchlines, you're turning the TV up, and you're slowly drawing away from situations that may prove to be embarrassing because you're always saying, what, huh, excuse me. And so people tend to uh, isolate themselves uh, if they um, 
are uncomfortable in these situations. Mm. I remember when I was in nursing school, I had a male um, clinical instructor. Mm -hmm. And at the time we were um, at Spalding Rehab doing our clinicals, and we had a lot of elderly patients to take care of. And I remember distinctly my uh, teacher, clinical instructor saying, okay, when you, when you all speak with the older adult population, lower the, the volume, like not the, like not to speak. Well, of, of course, speak slowly, but if there's a way to kind of lower your, the tone of your voice, so that way they could hear you better because the higher pitch, they have a harder time hearing. Well, that's true. If you can do that, uh, <clears throat> the most important thing you can do is to get their attention first mm -hmm. and to speak slowly and at a comfortable volume. Mm -hmm. Separate your words because when you run the words together, it's it's harder to separate them in in a uh, auditory part of the brain um, where you need to separate words. Uh, the the brain can't uh, um, decipher the speech quickly enough sometimes, uh, so that that's very helpful when you speak slowly. Yeah, and I'm sure there's a big distinction between yelling at somebody as you're talking to them versus talking loudly. And sometimes yelling uh, just creates distortion in the air. Um, it's it's best that they can watch your lips while you're speaking to them so they can combine uh, the lip reading function with the hearing function uh, so that they have a better chance of understanding uh, your speech. Yeah, definitely. So um, hearing aids, how big are hearing aids? <laughs> there's, a, there's a variety of hearing aids. They come in all sizes. Uh, maybe tiny ones that go in the ear, the ones like I wear that go uh, over the ear and uh, with the wire that goes inside. Mm -hmm. uh, so people will find whatever works and whatever they feel comfortable with cosmetically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, some people are um, very, very self-conscious about looking old or uh, feeling that they're disabled. So sometimes do you find that some people would seek um, your your help later on in the line in, um, in their age, as they get older, I guess what I'm trying to ask is, do people tend to um, see you much later than necessary? Because of I don't know if it's vanity or not, but um, just their insecurity as far as um, being able to look old or look disabled. You know, people wait sometimes seven to 10 years before even addressing their hearing issue. Uh, for obvious reasons of uh, vanity, uh, the expense, uh, they don't want to feel like they're getting old. They're already, you know, putting their teeth on in the morning. And, you know, <laughs> so, yeah, I can understand why people yeah. would resist uh, getting hearing aids. But if you want to be connected to the world, if you want to be connected to people, people that you love, your friends, uh, conversation is is critical to our human being, you know, to, to being human. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's uh, it's much bigger than than people realize sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Well, you know, my my mother wears hearing aids, and um, and she lost her hearing as she got older, but it actually her hearing got even worse after she received chemotherapy. Um, and we were prepared for that because the doctors, the oncologist told us that. Um, so her hearing is, if she doesn't have her hearing aids on, she basically cannot hear. She, I think she's very close to being deaf, but you know, thank goodness for hearing aids and how it really, it helps her to be able to feel engaged, especially during family parties. Um, and um, yeah, it's 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 a game changer to be able to have an effectively working hearing aid. Uh, absolutely. Uh, if if you if you're not hearing, then you're you're isolated. Yeah, you might as well not even be in the room. Um, I, I know a lot of instances where people were diagnosed as, as having dementia, 
Um, and the hearing aids brought them back into the world again, uh, just because it activated parts of the brain that, that allow them to, to hear and pay attention uh, and become more alert. Um, case in point, um, my uncle, who had a severe hearing loss, uh, was slipping into dementia, and and my cousins were, were very concerned about him. He's not engaged anymore. He doesn't talk anymore. He um, wasn't watching his, his favorite shows, uh, uh, even baseball, things like that. He was just sl slipping away. And uh, what he needed was a, an updated audiogram and, uh, and more powerful hearing aids. And suddenly he became part of the scene again. And um, they were so thrilled that they could bring him back uh, out of this this awful slip that he was he was going into his own world. You know? Wow! Wow! He was watching TV again. You know his favorite shows, and even if it was um, Wheel of Fortune or something. You know, as simple as it was, that was that's what he enjoyed. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. I know. Well, based. The hearing aids that my mom uses, um, there is an app that I can download and I'm able to adjust the volume um, or, you know, if she's in a uh, if she was in a big auditorium, there's a special setting for that versus if we were in the kitchen together talking. It's really amazing how far hearing aids have come along. Uh, there's no question about it. Every uh, two or three years, a new computer chip comes out. And the computer chips are always 10 times faster and 10 times larger. And they can put all this new instruction and um, everything that they've been working on just waiting for the computer chip. So uh, the technology uh, today is 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 fascinating. Um, and it's every year it gets gets better and better or every couple of years it gets better and better. Um, and uh it, 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 they're able to adapt more. Uh, they're able to identify human speech and try and preserve that signal. Uh, they try to eliminate what is not human speech or reduce what's not human speech uh, in the background noise. So there's a lot going on. And with the microphones, some face the rear, some face the front. So they work together, uh, right and left and front and rear to try and um, localize speech and uh, focus more on what's important. Yeah. One of the things I learned about um, since my mom's been wearing hearing aid is the fact that, and it does make sense to me after I just I read about it, how you know, when somebody is wearing a hearing aid, everything is amplified. They can't have a selective hearing. Like they can't just tune in to the sound of the waves, even though they're in the beach and there are a lot of people talking. They can't mm -hmm. just focus on the wave, the sounds of the waves. When you're wearing a hearing aid, everything's amplified. Well, you know, the hearing aids, there's nothing as good as normal hearing. So that's why we're big on preserving people's hearing. Uh, uh, but the hearing aids can be adjusted in many ways. And the newer the technology, uh, the better, the better the product. The hearing aids will always just pick up nearly everything around you, like your normal hearing would pick up everything around you. Um, and of course, you want to focus more on speech, if that's at all possible. And that's what the technology is con uh, constantly moving towards uh, these days, is focusing more on speech. Um, there are programs you can put in your hearing aids that uh, will make the hearing aid work better when you're in, say, background noise or a wedding uh, scene or uh, if you want to just listen to music, so these are programs that can be added uh, to your hearing aid settings. They can be adjusted with your phone now. Uh, the phone acts as a remote control. The phone also can act as a streamer. So the sound um, can go right from the phone to the hearing aid. So if you get a phone call or if you want to listen to music while you're walking down the street, you stream the sound from the hearing aids, uh, from the phone goes right to the hearing aids. So... That is, is a big help for people. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. You talk about preserving the hearing. Is there a way, you know, how um, there are certain vitamins that people are, that some people take to preserve or to make their eyes healthier? 
you know, vitamins like Occuvite, you know, special mm-hmm. type of vitamins to make the, the vision um, stronger or to preserve the vision. Are there any type of vitamins or anything that people can take or do to help um, make the ears, the hearing healthier? You know, I've, I've never heard of anything that uh, consistently works. Um, you know, I only know that some uh, drugs can be autotoxic. So if, if your doctor is recommending drugs to you, you might want to ask if, they're, if there's any autotoxicity in those particular uh, medications that they're taking. Um, you can look it up even online, uh, uh, the drug, and see if it has any kind of autotoxicity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's, that's uh, probably the most important thing is to avoid making your hearing bad. Uh, but there's nothing, once you have the hearing nerve damage, there's nothing that brings that back. Nothing that we know of right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, when, when you, you mentioned before, you work with musicians, keep making sure they have special type of hearing plugs or hearing aids to mm-hmm. preserve their hearing. Now, you know, people have gone to concerts and would, you know, maybe stand very close to that stereo and that stereo is booming and blasting and they come out of there with a big earache and some people they say oh i blew out my ear because i was like you know standing so close now can you explain what that what that technically means blowing out your eardrums and well go ahead sure yeah it uh, it doesn't really blow out your eardrums unless it was something really huge which i've i've never heard of a sound blowing out your eardrums but what it does do is that it dullens your nerve endings. It gives you a temporary hearing loss, uh, temporary nerve damage. And and if that's uh, if you don't stop uh, visiting those environments, it can become a permanent situation. So usually what saves people that in bands is that they take a break. So you play for 45 minutes, you take a 15-minute break. It, it helps the hearing uh, restore itself. Uh, but it's you have to be very careful when you're in these very loud uh, situations. You should have some kind of hearing protection, mm. and that goes for uh, household items like uh, power tools, mowing the lawn, all these things. You need to be able to protect your hearing, and you'll have it longer in life. Mm-hmm. So when there is a little bit of a nerve damage to the hearing, like maybe an example, like going to the concert and you there's a little bit of a uh, irritation or damage to the um, nerve endings of the hearing. Um, Is uh, any scarring happens from that? Is there any scarring that kind of build up and impair the hearing? uh, Usually it's a temporary uh, situation, but eventually it can become more permanent. Uh, I have a slide there, which shows the nerve endings. uh, Mm -hmm. If maybe you want to put that up. Is this uh, one? No, no. Yeah, there we go. All right. So if you look at the t- top screen where it says A, those are the nerve endings in the cochlea, uh, in the inner ear. And each one of those little uh, nerve endings, there's tens of thousands of them in the ear. And that top screen shows healthy nerve endings. If you look at the bottom screen, you can see how they're missing in sections and they're bent over and they're not uh, standing up straight. So those um, that would be a nerve damage on that screen. Okay. And, and when you have uh, nerve damage, it's like uh, uh, if you took a, uh, say, a large electronic keyboard and you just took a hammer and you just started smashing all the keys, uh, you, you're going to have missing notes. And that's what we're looking at right there. Those are all missing nerve endings. They cannot send a message to the brain if they're damaged. And so that's um, that's what we're dealing with when we have uh, people that have nerve damage in their inner ear. Uh, a hearing aid cannot always do as much as you would like uh, because there's not enough to work with. Okay. All right. So for people who who are considered deaf they can they have hearing aids or you know at what point is um is somebody not um you know doesn't they don't qualify for a hearing aid 
Well, right. It, it depends on how well they can understand speech given a certain volume. So if you turn the volume up to where they can finally hear <clears throat> and they can't understand speech, then they probably are more of a candidate for a cochlear implant. Oh, okay. Can you speak a about- A lot more of that these days. Pardon me? Can you speak a little bit more about the cochlear implant? How is that for somebody who doesn't qualify for hearing aid? Yes. Yeah. The cochlear implant uh, places an electrode uh, or a series of electrodes inside the cochlea. So it artificially uh, stimulates the nerve that goes right to the brain uh, where the nerve endings are all dead there. Uh, mm-hmm. So this, these are performed uh, pretty regularly now and, and quite successfully for people that cannot uh, use hearing aids. Wow. Okay. That's mm-hmm. amazing. That's great. It's a surgical procedure, so it's it's not an easy thing. It's yeah, requires uh, you know they have to really kill the air to to uh, make this work. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And where is the device? Is that um, an internal device that's, that is visible, or is that yeah. something that's outside? Yeah, it's it's outside the ear, and it connects with a magnet uh, to the bone uh, behind the ear. Um, and so there's, there's there's quite a lot to it. They have to go in for uh, programming regularly, um, and it's, there's nothing as good as as normal hearing. If you yeah. have normal hearing, you're a lucky person. That's right. <clears throat> My own uh, story: when I was young, somebody threw a firecracker. It went off a, probably about a foot from my ear. And um, my ear's been ringing ever since. So that's going on 55 years now. And so I'm particularly careful with my hearing. I try to wear hearing protection uh, wherever I can. I wear hearing aids in both ears now. Mm-hmm. Just because I'm, you know, you have that injury. Uh, and then just the, the aging process. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, that's actually, I'm glad you brought that up. Does Hearing loss, does that go along with aging? Do Does everybody who, as we get older, does that mean our hearing will automatically become less and less or are there people not, out not, there? Not everybody. No, a lot of people, as they're, they're older, they have perfect hearing. So if some of it is a genetic thing, uh, something your parents may have handed down, one of your parents anyways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, definitely. All right, so I'm going to going to move here to did you did you want to speak to this slide here and actually it but comes up for me for for this particular slide is you know what what type of care do people do you recommend people take for their ear i mean we have our teeth we we floss and we brush our teeth you know our eyes when we go outside if it's sunny we wear sun, sun um our our shades um, any, what is the best way for us to clean out our ear or take care of it? That's okay. Great. So, uh, what we're looking at here is a, uh, a silicon ear and, uh, the first quarter inch, uh, of the ear canal, if you can see this. Yeah. That's where the wax is produced in the ear canal. And when you see wax, ear wax, way down against the eardrum, stopping their hearing, uh, it's because they put it there. And usually they use some kind of a swab. I won't mention any names. There are many types of swabs. They say, don't put them in your ear. Well, they say that because that's not where the wax is supposed to be, is way down deep. Normally, it migrates out of the ear. Usually when you're sleeping, um, as, you, as you turn on your pillow, the warmth from your ear allows it to migrate out, and it usually comes out naturally. In some cases, people produce way too much wax, then it has to be removed uh, physically. And normally, we'd use something like a curette. Uh, I, here, I use a, a video uh, curette. It's a camera that goes in the ear, and I can see what I'm removing. Um, I've removed quite a few things uh, over the years. Um, a pearl, a uh, piece of amethyst crystal. Uh, oh, my children, goodness. Children, mostly, you know, they like to put things in their ear. 
And uh, so. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> so, you know, it sounds like, you know, um, you, you just never know where you're going to find in that ear. It depends on the age, the population that you are working with. But um, mm-hmm. so again, so what is, how did, would you, um, how would you advise us on how to best clean our ear? Do we just kind of. Just, I would leave it alone. Just leave it alone. I would leave it alone. If you ever have trouble hearing, uh, have it looked at. Okay. But it, it's supposed to maintain itself and it does a pretty good job. And if you think there's wax in your ear, let somebody look first. And if yep. they see wax, then you can either buy an earwax removal kit at any pharmacy uh, for about 8 or $9. Uh, there are drops that turn the wax and make it softer. And mm-hmm. once it's soft, it'll come out with a, a warm water flush, lukewarm water. You would do that over a, uh, over the sink and, and you know draw from a bowl of lukewarm water and... And you'll see the wax come out in the sink. And if it's stubborn and it's too hard, sometimes it solidifies. Um, you you have to have uh, more extreme measures. You think of Q-tips and that's what usually people buy the Q-tips for is for the ear. You know, right. so and, and I mean, I mean, if you're going to clear, uh, clean your ear with a Q-tip, just do the outside and don't mm-hmm. go inside the ear, uh, but just a fraction. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we talked about this. Can you can you explain to us what um, this slide shows? Okay, this is uh, an audiogram. Uh, this uh, test, uh, th- these are test results of a person's hearing. Uh, you see the further down uh, the scores go, that means the volume was turned up louder before they could hear it. So th- the threshold should be up in the normal hearing range there. And you can see that they're down into the moderate hearing loss in those high pitch areas. High pitch areas, anything above uh, 2,000, you can see up top 2,000 hertz uh, mm-hmm. to 8,000. Those are the high pitches. That's that's where we need to be able to hear um, consonants. Uh, consonants are very quiet sounds, and they're high pitch sounds. So uh, if somebody can't hear consonants, then they're hearing speech but not understanding it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Any particular continents that's harder to hear than others? Uh, yeah. If you uh, let's do this test, everybody, uh, you can rub your hands together, and it creates friction. Mm-hmm. Can you hear that friction? If you can hear that friction, then you're able to hear some consonants, like oh. the S sound, the SH sound, CH sound. If you rub one finger against your hand then that shows that your hearing is, is actually pretty good. Wow, that's great. All right, that's a good test. That's a little home hearing test. <laughs> and it's free. Thank you. That's right. <laughs> All right, so let's see the next sound here. I mean, next slide. Okay, so if you, uh, that's uh, that little uh, banana-shaped thing is called the speech banana. So, it's, it's, it shows you where all the sounds are uh, across the different tones. And, and particularly if you look down below where you see the truck and the airplane, those are very loud sounds down there. And um, these are the sounds that we like to avoid. Anything that's very loud and continuous. Mm. So if you're working in a noisy environment uh, for eight hours a day, it doesn't have to be all that loud to be damaging. But if you're if you're working in a situation where you see the truck or the airplane, uh, j- just minutes in that environment would be damaging to your hearing. Wow! Wow! And I see dog barking as a uh, and telephone, the ringing of a telephone. Yeah, those are pretty loud sounds. Mm-hmm. Wow! Wow! Amazing. All right. Next slide. Can you tell us a little bit about more about the slide over the counter hearing aids? Over the counter hearing aids have uh, recently been uh, out in I don't I don't know where uh, pharmacies are. Um, they're not as advanced, of course, than than the ones um, that you know we fit in the office here. But in a pinch, they'll help people. Uh, some elderly people can't uh, can't manage hearing aids; they don't have funds. 
Uh, this might help. They're really for just mild to moderate hearing losses. Uh, and the technology is, is extremely lacking, but it's, it's better than putting your hand up to your ear and, um, and saying pe- asking people to repeat themselves. Yeah. Mm. The, the important thing with any hearing device is the brain. The brain of the hearing device is the computer chip. And the computer chip um, is very, very advanced and very specific uh, when it comes to fitting uh, a patient with the hearing device. Um, it, it matches their audiogram uh, and it matches their audiogram for different environments. And it has to be uh, programmed so that they can hear quiet sounds. And the louder the sound gets, the less it amplifies it. So uh, a real hearing aid does a much better job by far than an over-the-counter type hearing aid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's all about the brain. Wow. The computer chip. Yeah. That makes sense. Some people use, uh, if they're in nursing homes or whatever, you know, after they lose a hearing aid, they probably end up getting something like this personal sound amplification, <clears throat> which is like the old Sony Walkman almost. You put the headsets on and you can just turn the volume up. That's all some people need if they're in that situation. Okay. So people, and, if if I was talking with somebody who was wearing a personal sound amplification, uh, amplification product, I would be speaking into the Walkman looking device so that they could hear me. Well, you wouldn't have to go up close to it. Usually it's, it's, um, it can be powerful enough to pick up your voice. Mm-hmm. Um, and they work, they work very well for people that are in that situation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they don't care what it looks like. You know, it's just a big yeah. headset that goes over your ear. Yeah. Wow. In, a, okay. in the big box. So it sounds like there's something for everybody. There's mm-hmm. this one here, the personal sound ampli- amplification product. There's the over the counter. And then there's the ones that you provide that's specially fitted based on the testing. And you suit it to the result of the test, right? Yep. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the great thing about uh, the hearing aids that are advanced is that. Uh, you get feedback from the people after they've worn it for a week or two. They might say, well, this this tends to bother me a little bit. You make an adjustment. Oh, that may, I'm not hearing that loud enough. You make an adjustment. So you keep fine-tuning it until you get it just, just where they're most comfortable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember the first time I took my mom home after she was fitted for her hearing aid. We were driving home. It was a... Uh, uh, spring day and had the windows down and she's like wow i could hear the wind i could hear the other cars i could hear you know i could hear people talking we were at the stoplight and she was just so happy that she was able to hear life you know just the the sounds we take for granted but to be able to have that back was amazing true True. A a lot of people come in and they say i can hear the birds now yeah, I couldn't hear them before. I can hear my directional signal in my my car, mm-hmm. my seatbelt warning. You know all these sounds that they couldn't hear before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Can you speak more about the self fitting hearing aids? Um, it, it, there's not much uh, to say other than they try to test your hearing over the telephone. Uh, <clears throat> If it sounds too good to be true, then it probably is. But because I haven't found many people successful with anything that isn't custom fitted uh, mm-hmm. and and good technology, mm-hmm. it's, we're, we're we're fighting a battle against nerve damage in the ear, and it's not a difficult. Uh, I mean, it is a very difficult job to try and get someone to hear as good as possible. When you're dealing with limited nerves, there's so many nerve endings are damaged that you need to have as much technology going for you as possible. Yeah. And so 
yeah, that's that's what I have to say about that. Yeah. There's no shortcuts sometimes. There's only the only the only thing advantage that any of these other products have is that they're less expensive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the only advantage. There's no advantage to the hearing. Right. Right. I guess one of the base, the most fundamental things to think about is when somebody has a hearing loss, it's good to know the root cause. What is it? wax build up in the ear? <laughs> is it going consistently to a concert and having, you know, sitting in the, the very front row? Is it hereditary? Is it because the hearing aid is no longer functioning and you need a higher level one? You know, so I guess that that's, that's what I'm getting from you, Steve, is just, you know, we need to be more aware and be able to take action, right? Well, right. I mean, when I uh, first thing I do when I take a patient and is to look in their ears, <clears throat> maybe they do have wax in their ears, and the hearing test will reveal much about the hearing loss, whether it's nerve damage or if it's something that uh, requires me to send them to a physician. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, There's, you know, if the red flag comes up, then you got to send them out for, for their own their own health reasons. Mm -hmm. All right. So this one here has many different types of hearing aids. Yeah. The um, the ones on the left are in the air products. And on the bottom, in the air products, the ones on the right, they go behind the ear and in the ear somehow. Mm -hmm. The ones on the left, I used to manufacture those for oh, probably about close to 15 years um, right here on the premises. And um <clears throat> that's when a lot of manufacturers were, were doing a lousy job and um, and I was doing a better job than them. So everything slowly shifted to the the, the wire on the right, uh, right at about three o'clock. Um, it's called receiver in the canal or receiver uh, in the air. Mm -hmm. Those are good, uh, particularly good for high pitched hearing losses, which is what I have. Um, but you can fit many different hearing losses now. Some people still like the in the in the canal in the ear type. That's fine. The, the difference is when you block up the ear with an in the ear hearing aid. Sometimes people hear their own voice like they're in a barrel. Um, so that's where you need more venting, which you can provide uh, for the ones on the right. Oh, okay, all right. Because I wasn't sure. Is it? Um client or patient preference is it the type of hearing loss they have is it the budget that they have um i wasn't sure yeah. how a person comes across you know deciding yeah if if a person has a high pitch hearing loss they usually don't like the air blocked off it sounds like they're in a barrel mm. so that's where the the open fittings have come a long way <clears throat> over the last 15 years okay the air can be uh, open, yet you're still getting the high pitch performance from the speaker, which is in your canal. Okay. And how about the ones on the bottom? Uh, the ones on the bottom, uh, yeah, equally. Yeah, they have a microphone that's that's further away from uh, the big vent hole on the bottom, which you can see. Mm -hmm. um, so that allows them to get a little bit more volume uh, from the hearing aid without it whistling. Mm. <clears throat> Yeah, the technology now uh, yeah. is is so much better uh, that the hearing aids don't whistle like they used to. That's good. These are not your grandpa's hearing aids. Can you tell me a little bit more about um, you know what did it what you do compared to what an audiologist do? Oh, sure. Um, an audiologist. Um, historically, uh, was a diagnostician that would work with the physician, with the ENT physician. <clears throat> um, a hearing aid dispenser, uh, which is myself, I'm a board-certified hearing instrument specialist. My specialty is the hearing aid uh, alone, whether it's um, fitting them, um, I took it further in building them, and uh, I can repair them. I can pull them apart in many cases. Um, 
So the audiologists uh, slowly have come into the hearing aid field. Uh, and so you have both professions that are doing the same, pretty much the same thing now. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Can you, um, I was reading some articles and how they explained how spatial awareness is so important. And that's why hearing is important as far as fall prevention in the older adults. Can you, can you explain to us what spatial awareness is and how that's connected to falls? Well, I could tell you about the inner ear, uh, which is the, uh, the vestibule, which tells you whether your head is turned one way or the other. It's like if you take an empty glass, a uh, half full glass of water, and you and you can see through it, of course, you can't with this, but you can see through it, the water will touch different parts of the glass. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And that's what happens inside of the inner ear. When you turn your head, the fluid in these semicircular canals, it looks kind of like this here, because that's not a great picture. You want but, me to put the slide back up? Would that help? Yeah. If you go all the way uh, to the right, um, in right. the top part, that's it right there. Those are the semicircular canals. Mm -hmm. Those are filled with fluid, and they have nerve endings along the entire uh, stretch of, of the, uh, of the um, uh, canal there. And so if your head is turned one way or another, it sends a message to the brain that, you, that you're standing up straight or you've, you're on your side. And if they're not working right, you don't, the brain doesn't get a message or not a proper message as to, to where you are. So you can likely fall. Um, you can get dizzy. Um, so that's, that's what happens. That's what that organ is responsible for, is telling you whether you're standing up straight or you're on your side or whatever. Wow. Uh, is that the part of the ear that's involved when you have vertigo or? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So what's going on in with vertigo as far as the inner, the semicircular canal? It, there's the not enough. The semicircular fluid? canal is if the fluid is imbalanced. Uh, sometimes there's uh, too much fluid, not enough fluid, or the nerve endings are damaged somehow. Um, you can have, um, you know, all kinds of uh, issues with balance. Wow. Yeah. Now, when people have um, ear uh, an infection to their ears, what part of the ear usually gets infected? Is it more in the area here in the auditory canal? Is oh, you can have a, 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 a canal infection. You can, but mostly it's to the right of that inside the middle ear. Right here? To the right. Yeah. As you go to the, no, the other way. Oh, this way. Oh. Yes. Okay. So that's the eardrum right there. Or yeah. the tympanic membrane. Those are the three little bones above, smallest bones in the human body. <clears throat> and that's mm -hmm. usually where the inf infection occurs is in there. Because if you see uh, going all the way down to the bottom right, it says opening to nasopharynx. Yeah. That's the eustachian tube uh, area. And that allows the uh, pressure inside the middle ear uh, to equalize. So if you go up in an airplane, it puts pressure on your eardrum um, and you, you yawn or you, you swallow and it opens up that eustachian tube and, and it, it allows the pressure to equalize. So mm -hmm. when you get an infection in the middle ear, um, sometimes it blocks up that eustachian tube and so that it can't drain. Uh, and then it, it creates more infection when it can't drain. So then you have to have... Uh, uh, a physician, uh, an ear, nose, and throat physician, uh, come to the rescue with the, either some um, uh, antibiotics, or they have, sometimes have to puncture the eardrum and put a tube in the ear. Oh, oh, okay. That's why some people, kids especially, they have ear tubes. That's correct. Yeah, and and in children, the eustachian tube is more horizontal than it is in an adult. In an adult, the, the station tube, you can see it comes down more at an angle. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, so puncturing a hole in the eardrum to, to allow um, drainage to occur, mm -hmm. will that create scarring to the eardrum and will that impact their hearing in the long run? Yeah, not usually, not much scarring because they, they put a, uh, a very accurate uh, slit and they put a tubing 
uh, in, into, insert into the eardrum. And eventually the uh, it's a PE tube, and eventually it comes out and the mm-hmm. eardrum just heals up. So there's not, not much scarring with that. As opposed to if if you don't do anything and the eardrum bursts, then you're going to have some irregular um, uh, scarring going on. Okay. All right. You know what? While you, we have this slide up, I'm wondering, um, as far as the hearing aid goes, how far into the auditory canal does the hearing aid um, go in? in order about for- halfway, uh, okay. typically about halfway. Okay, about halfway. Oh, okay. Or a little bit less in in certain fittings. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Very interesting. Okay. It's it's a miraculous part of the human body, which they don't even they don't even know enough information about it. Um, they're constantly trying to study uh, different animals, uh, birds that that can uh, recover their hearing after uh, mm-hmm. noise exposure. Uh, whereas mm-hmm. people can't do that, uh, certain birds, a lot of birds, uh, their hearing is restored after very loud, damaging sounds. So right. hopefully they come up with a solution sooner than later, yeah. hopefully in my lifetime. Yeah, it is. It's, it is miraculous. And you we take it for granted, especially when, um, you know, we get to the, the dizziness and the, the vertigo and, you know, mm-hmm. you lose the ear or it starts hurting. Um, we take it for granted. And it's just very a very sophisticated uh, way of um, helping us not only hear, but maintain our balance. Yeah, and, and survive. And, yeah. you know, it allows us to communicate. It allows us to hunt. It allows us to do all these different things that um, are essential for survival. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, let me stop the screen share here. All right. Okay, okay. So um, is there anything else that you want um, us to know about the hearing and types of hearing aids out there? It looks like there might be like a new law that's coming out that says that, you know, more um, hearing aids are going to be more accessible for people. Well, I think that's great if they work, uh, and if they at least it'll give them uh, some exposure to any device. Uh, I don't think they could ever match performance with some of the higher technologies, of course. But whatever gets them uh, started is a good thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I guess the uh, the best thing to let the the public know is yeah that's it's a great thing but um it's not really a cookie cutter type situation you need to be able to have the proper testing to make sure that whatever device you're going to be using is going to meet the the needs of your ear is that correct correct it's a it's an accurate prescription and the technology has to be involved uh, in order to help with the environments, different environments, different types of voices. Um, the technology is, is critical today because we're faced with a very difficult task of trying to replace a part of the human body that's it's very, uh, very advanced. It's very, uh, it's, it's not a, a simple uh, process, the hearing process. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think, one of the things that I like to do here is when I find somebody that needs a hearing aid, that I let them take one home, a demo, try this for a week and just see, see how it changes your life. And if you like it, then we'll talk about it. But um, not enough people do that. They should be giving people uh, demos to try so that they know, you know, what they're getting into. Mm-hmm. Most of the time people will come back and say, I love this. This is, this is great. I'm hearing things I never heard before. And, so, you know, they don't have to buy something and then and then say, you know, I don't know, you know, whether I should buy this or not. <clears throat> mm-hmm. yeah. So the demo is important. The I demo think. is very important, definitely. And that's really a nice, um, generous, um, you know, suggestion for, you know, for you to be able to do that because, you know, if you don't really hear that that often, you know, mm-hmm. test this out for a week. Um, how about people who have a really arthritic hands. Mm-hmm. I know we're talking about the ears, but you need the hands to be able to f- 
put the hearing aid into, you know, in the proper place. Are there some people that because their hands are just so arthritic or they don't have use of their hands properly, do they, would they not qualify for certain types of hearing aids? Right. Well, you know, any hearing aid requires you be able to put it in. And <clears throat> if you have no one to help you, you're, you're in trouble. Yeah. There's yeah. nothing easy about putting a hearing aid in unless you know, sometimes I can customize it. I, I put a, uh, a post in an in-the-ear hearing aid that sticks out that they can grab with one of the fingers uh, in their thumb uh, to help put it in. Yeah. So yeah. I, I work with them. I work with people to see if there's any way we can um, allow them to be able to do it themselves, which is ideal. Uh, but if they have, if they can't do it themselves, they have to have somebody, a family member, they can help them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I know my mom wears the the one that um similar to what you were talking about, the one that you have, and she her hands are arthritic and you know she's able to manage, but um what she doesn't really like is wearing a mask <laughs> because you know we put on the mask behind the ear and her hearing aid pops out. Yeah. Well, we've had a lot of people lose their hearing aids over the past uh, couple of years. And uh, they, you know, they just take the mask off quickly and it, it can throw the hearing aid, you know, yeah, right a ways away. So, uh, yeah, it's a problem. Yeah. yeah. If you wear a mask, you should, you should take it off from the front and the back at the same time and just make a big circle around your ear and, mm -hmm. and, uh, clear. You have to clear everything. Yeah. The hearing aid, uh, you have to clear the ear, clear the glasses, whatever. Uh, whatever's there. So make a big circle with that rubber band around your ear. Yeah. Very, very good tip, actually. That's a very good tip. Yeah. So uh, we're almost at the top of the hour. Can you give us like one or two key takeaways that you want people to, to know about, um, about hearing aids and prevention of hearing loss? Well, yeah, there's two things there. You, you want to protect whatever hearing you have. Uh, there's all kinds of protection available, and it's uh, smart to protect what you have. If, you, if, if it's already too late for that, then you have to visit different people. Um, you want to find someone that's going to care for you uh, with the hearing. Uh, so you don't want a place that and just wants to sell you something, you want a place that has a caring uh, mentality. Um, <clears throat> and that's, that's, that's critical because you don't just buy the hearing aid. You're buying the service from the facility so that you can keep going back whenever you need to, to make adjustments, retest your hearing, fine tunings, mm -hmm. and, and get a place that, that uh, can provide a demo for you to uh, try and take home. The manufacturers mm -hmm. will give anybody demos uh, for this purpose, they, the specialist doesn't have to buy them. Uh, they just give them to you. And they say, yeah, use this demo so that you can have your patients try them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. And, and do something about it because if you don't, you know, you can slowly slip away from uh, situations that prove embarrassing. You, you want to be connected with people. And that's the reason for hearing aids. Mm. Very good point. It just actually, another question popped into my head. While I still have you, your captivated attention, <laughs> are you finding that more um, younger, are, are people requiring hearing aid at a younger age more and more? Uh, I, I don't know that. Maybe I'm just getting older, but uh, yeah, I'm seeing people, uh, they exposing themselves with too much loudness, too much volume. Their stereos in their cars have, you know, a thousand watt stereo in a small car. There's no need for it. And those bass speakers that you hear booming, booming, going down the street. That's the worst thing for your hearing is those because that's really making your eardrum uh, pound. And it's it's very damaging to the hearing. Yeah. Yeah, I could feel them as they're driving by. I mean, not yeah. only hear it, but feel the boom. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, you've got to protect what you've got. Well, Steve Tobias, thank you so much for joining Aging Strong today. Uh, I really learned a lot from you. And um, if people needed to ask you questions or want to be able to, um, you know, learn more about your hearing aids and what you provide, how can they get in touch with you? Well, they can uh, go to our website, TobiasHearing.com, and we can uh, communicate through the uh, email system there. Very good. Or, awesome. or call us. Our phone number is on there. Oh, good. Very good. Awesome. Okay. All right. Well, thank you again so much. And I want to thank the Quincy Health Department for our continued um, partnership in allowing me to do Aging Strong under the health links at QATV. So until then, thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.